Welcome to part two of my Cup of Tea workshop series. In this series, we create projects featuring the Cup of Tea stamp set, which is a photopolymer stamp set, available now, Stampin' Up. So many great sentiments on there. And we also work with these dies. Oops, one fell out. Little teacup. The dies are called teacup dies. Here are the dies we'll be working with. And we also will be working with the designer series paper and other coordinating products from the suite, such as these cards and envelopes. Here's the Tea Boutique suite available now. It's part of our annual catalog. You can get the entire suite for $67. 158670 is the code. And if you do shop at my store, please use the host code. When you get to the stamp, paperchef.stampinup.net, there's always a host code at the bottom of the page, which is current, and that will get you entered into my drawing for prizes. All right, so that, let's get started. Later on, I'll show you the designer series paper, the Tea Boutique designer series paper. We're only going to work with the one piece right now when we create this project. Today, we're creating this project, these nail file boxes, and you can get nail files from anywhere, and this will hold those for you, and it's a nice little salon gift. This stamp is from Hello Ladybug, which I'll show you, but this stamp here, Enjoy, is what we'll be making today. We'll do the Enjoy one. Just wanted to show you where I got that other stamp from, Hello. So please feel free to use whatever sentiments from whichever stamp set you have, but it's just, you need a little tiny sentiment for this one because it's a narrow box. So we'll be using this piece of paper that has the crushed curry lemons on it and garden green. So I'm gonna use the garden green ink to coordinate with that. We'll do a little wrap with sweet sorbet. And you can also just kind of use this one as an example of another way to do it. We, this is a wrap done in Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis with a little bit of Parakeet Party. So those are the in colors. Some of our in colors are featured in this Tea Boutique Suite. Well, actually all of the in colors, plus a couple of other colors. So for, for this project, I'm gonna be using the Garden Green ink for the sentiment, and I'll be using this piece of paper. So you wanna take, I told you last week when we created the cards, which I'll show you later, We'll go back and look at what we created in part one. But I told you, hey, save that lemon piece of paper because I have something in mind for it. So this, you get four sheets of lemon paper, the paper with the lemons, in each pack of the six by six designer series paper. So we'll go ahead and make a couple of the boxes because I like to do a couple projects at once when I, when I do things. And I thought what would be fun is when I first created this project, I used a little three quarter inch circle punch. And if you have a punch, that's great to make that little notch. You don't even need a notch. If you don't have a punch or this die, you're okay not even making a notch. But I thought it would be fun to try making the notch with the lemon slice, the same lemon slice I created down here. And it was very easy to make the notch that way in the paper. So we'll be doing that as well. So I'm going to take out the trimmer, cut the size paper we need. Then I'll take out my Simply Scored. You can also use your trimmer as a scoring tool as well because our, our Stampin' Up! trimmer comes with a scoring tool. It's just that I prefer to use a different tool when I'm scoring. So go ahead and take out your paper. I'm just going to go ahead and cut two at once. It's If you want your patterns to go a certain way, I don't think this one really matters. I think the lemons are all over. But it does look like this would be a better vertical design. So I'm just going to turn the paper that way. Actually here, I don't think it really matters. So I'm just gonna, I'll turn one each way. How about that? Then we really don't have to worry about it. And you're just going to cut the paper three and a half inches. Okay, I'll write this down later when I take out the sticky note. So three and a half inches. Now you already have six inches, so the, the width or the height is six inches. Okay, so six inches by three and a half inches. That's it. Easy peasy. And those of you who took my scan and cut courses already know how to do this electronically in Canvas Workspace. We designed this box from scratch inside of the software. So you don't even need to actually do the scoring. You can actually use your machine to do this then you'll be just doing the decorating part. But I also like to teach how to do it from, with the scoring tool. And sometimes it's just nice and relaxing to get out your, your tools and you're watching TV and you're creating your projects, right? So let's go ahead and do the scoring that we need to do. So sometimes it's just nice to do things manually. We're gonna score it one inch. We're gonna score it one and a quarter inch. Now, we're going to go across again. 
one more inch, but we scored at one and a quarter. So now we're going to go to two and a quarter and two and a half. This will make more sense when I actually fold the paper. You can actually see it a little better. But you can maybe see the score lines a little better on that side. There are the score lines. So you're basically having a quarter inch on each side. Okay, I thought it'd be fun to show you my new mug. Don't worry, there's nothing in it. But this coordinates with this. So one of the things we have now at my Stampin' Up! store, along with the launch of the new catalog, all right, we have mugs, and they come in all of the new in colors. So I want to know what's your favorite in color, because my favorite in color is this one. It's called Tahitian Tide. Okay, and so I'm just going to grab a little spatula. Followed by my second favorite in color, which would be Parakeet Party. So you can get mugs in all this ombre. Oops, a little bit of water dripped out. I better catch that. I grabbed that out of the sink. Just going to catch it so it doesn't end up on my, in my projects. All right, I'm soaking up water with a wet baby wipe. Let's see how that works. Come on, move over. There we go. I hope my next paper doesn't get too wet. So I'm going to just now fold this up like that, like so. And I hope you're doing this along with me. I'm making the little box. Hey, I see some of my team members already on here. All right, cool. Well, I do announce in my VIP group and my team group that I was going live today. So minimum, there's your box. Making the little notch just makes it extra cute. And then sealing the bottom in a certain way makes it extra cute. But we'll seal the bottom after we do seal the sides. Let's see if this is dry enough to do the scoring. <laughs> okay. That's, I think it's dry enough. Oh, this one has a big wet blob on it. So we'll use a different piece. We'll cut it later. We'll score first and cut it later. So we're going to score it one, one and a quarter, two and a quarter, and two and a half. Okay, and let me get rid of this. Grab the trimmer. Okay, there are the score lines, right? Vertical, so I'm just going to go here and make it three and a half. Three and a half wide. And then you have all those extra pieces you can do all kinds of stuff with. Like all these extra pieces for cards and things. And so we'll just turn that over. And you want to do this first so when we do the little lemon slice in the trimmer, we can actually, you know, when we run it through, we want to be able to like know where to put the little, the little piece of lemon. All right, so let's now do that, and then we'll do. Well, then we'll do, we'll come back and do stamping a little bit, you know, after that. So that we'll just do one thing at a time, kind of like to teach that way. So we're gonna pull the stamping trimmer. I mean, uh, cutting emboss. Sorry, cutting emboss over here closer. I'm gonna make some room here so you can see this. I'm gonna open up the platform. When you die cut, you have. Your, your platform, number one. You have your two. For any thin dies, I call it a thin die adapter, but it's just plate number two. You have plate number three, and then we're going to put our stuff down here, and we have another plate number three. So that's the sandwich you need when you're die cutting. I'm going to put this, this box down with this pattern facing up. Okay, you want, it, you want this pattern facing up so that in case you accidentally rip the paper, you're ripping the inside of the box. And now you, this little, this is the little one we're using, the little lemon slice, like that. And I just want, I just want it to be, so like there's my little sides, right? You could sort of make it like that, a little notch. So you don't need it too far down. Maybe just like that. 
And I just think that looks cute. And also people are going to say, how'd you do that? Right? You did it with the little lemon slice. I could do two at once, but in case we mess up, let's just do one at a time. In case we, you know, in case it turns wonky on our machine. So let's go in a little bit, hear that little bumping noise and back out. So now we made the little notch. See? The little notch in our box. Now the reason I'm showing you how to make notches is maybe you make other kinds of boxes where you actually, the notch is like a finger notch you put inside the boxes. I just thought it looked cute. But really, in this kind of thing, you don't really need a notch. It's, it's like a nail file. But in some boxes, you need a notch for the thumb so that they can get the boxes open. Easy. So let's do another one for the other box. Just getting that little slice. And you, I'll just make this one a little bit down further. And if you make it go down further, it just goes into the sides a little bit. Maybe not that far down. So you see how I'm using washi tape here. You don't want it to slip. Okay, so there we go. So now that we have that done. I'm going to go ahead and do the adhering. And so I'm going to use the Seal Plus. I'm just taking a sip of my drink. So when you want, when you want to, you want to take your nap out. It helps you when you put the adhesive in there. It helps it so it like when you adhere. You'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to put a big line of adhesive down there, or you could use glue. I'm going to do it again, you, just in this one inch part. Don't get into the, don't get into the side of the box, right? Just on the one inch part. Now, fold this over like that and fold it. If the, the nail file just helps you keep it all straight inside so the box doesn't get wonky, right? And then fold it over like that. And that's it. That's your box. Do 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 and we got to glue the bottom. I just used my nail file to help me keep the structure of the box. Cute. So that's the front. Now let's do this one. We'll adhere this one. You can get these from Big Lots, Dollar Tree, um, Five Below, or any, any beauty salon shop. Try to support your local shops so that they stay open because everybody keeps saying buying everything online. I mean, you can buy them online if you want, but get out there. Go shopping. Because if you don't go shopping and you only shop online, you won't, you'll look around and soon there won't be any shopping malls left and you won't, you won't, there won't be any stores left. <laughs> okay, so what I just did is I just pinched the bottom of the box. I'm going to do it again slower. That's kind of what you want to go for. There's like a pinch in the sides of the box. Okay, so let me do that slower. Pinching in the sides of the box. Like that. Pinch. And then once you get the sides of the box, the bottom pinched in, you just put some actual like liquid glue there. So instead of like, I say actual liquid glue, as opposed to like your, you know, your rolling adhesive isn't going to work down at the bottom there. You, you, you probably need liquid glue. It's a little better. So put that there. Put a big old blob of it and then you can scrape it off later. I'm going to put a big old blob on this one too. And I can hold them both at the same time. So it'll ooze out once you squeeze it shut, but you just put a big old blob. Oops, that's a big too much of a blob. All right. <laughs> a little too much on that one. We'll put it over on this one. So now I take my little clamps and I've used these in other the little clamp trick. So we're going to shut that. And I'm just going to clamp it there. Clamp it there for a minute. Get the extra glue off. Oops. Clamp. Clamp. And then this one. Get that extra glue off. And you can kind of hold it. You know, or you can either hold it or use your clamps. I only brought two clamps with me for this tutorial. And if you are going to use your fingers, move them around once in a while because what happens is your fingers will stick to the paper and next thing you know, you'll pull your fingers off and you'll have a big old blob of paper with you. 
because this glue is super sticky. See how I'm moving my fingers around a little bit to try to... And then I like to actually put lint. I use a little dryer sheet to actually put lint on these. I actually want lint to go on them. Usually you want to take lint off of things, but I actually want a little bit of lint there because it keeps my glue from being so sticky. So I kind of rub a dryer sheet. It's just another trick. Ooh, now my room smells nice. There's nothing as nice as when you take like your dryer sheet and clothes out of a hot dryer. I should say my husband, he's gonna be over there like, I'm the one that does the laundry. What are you talking about? Okay, so there's, there's how to do that. So that, see how that, that little clamp just helped to pinch? And that's what the bottoms look like. So see how that is? That's the bottom of your box. So now you just wanna, when you do your little wrap for your box, you wanna make sure that that's the front. All right, so let's do the little wrap since it's some die cutting with a little lemon. So while the machine is set up, I'm just gonna move this over for a minute. We're gonna need this die again for our little lemon slice. So we could do a couple, a couple little die cuts and stuff while we have the machine, then we'll make a little more room. So what I'm going to do now is take a piece of just white scrap paper, and we're gonna, we're gonna do the lemon in crushed curry, the lemon slice. Crushed curry is a coordinating color with the sweet the tea boutique suite so try to use coordinating colors if you have if you can if you don't have them you know use what you have i'm going to take this little lemon slice this will look cute on tea too i saw linda who's who's on here she did this she added this to the card we made last week little lemon slices to the tea card which will be cute as well so add little lemons to whatever you want it's going to be cute just i'm just uh doing it on a sticky note first i probably should have used my little Silicone mat. A little better from when I'm stamping. Okay, I'm going to make a couple lemon slices. I don't need them all right now, but I just need a couple. Okay, and then while we're there, I think I'm going to just cut out a couple extra shapes for sentiments. So you could use, so we could use this one. And there is a little outline one for this too. So I like to use this. We'll use this one for the enjoy, for the sentiment. And then I wanted to use from, from another set. So this is the two I'm using right now. This, this one, which I'm going to turn around. And this little lemon slice, which I'm going to just put on one of these lemons. Right? And I'm going to use my little bit of washi tape. That's it. There's a good one. Put that. Well, that's a good. They're all good. They all came out good. Okay, so you want to tape that one down and then this one can float around. But I also want to get a few things to, for sentiments. And what I decided to do for this particular project for the diaper fold was I couldn't really, I didn't think any of these, I could have put a teacup on there, but I didn't want this to just be tea. Now, if you want, put a teacup on there. So for you, that doesn't, if, say you don't have other dyes that would work. Just for you, just get a blank teacup and put your sentiment in the blank teacup. Okay, that's what you can all do. But because I have other dyes, I wanted to use some other dyes. So I'm going to use these dyes called the, they're the new stylish shapes dyes. And I just thought it'd be fun to use these for the thank you. See what, I think it was this one. It's the third circle in. There's one, two, three. There's like six stitch circles. So the third one in looked good for thank you. And I did a couple, there was another one that fit inside the little square. I mean, there's a lot of sentiments. Here, we can even make, I'm going to make one with the little tiny circle too, because the enjoy fit inside there as well. So while I'm, while I'm going through there, just cut a couple extra shapes. Okay, and in fact, I'm just, I, I think I just might cut an extra teacup while I'm going through there. All right, so there we go. I'm going to roll that through. Same sandwich as before. This time I'm not going to go back this direction. I'm going to just pull, pull the platform out the other side like this. Okay, let's see what we have. We have something for the thank you for the diaper fold that we're going to do. And I always like to stamp after I get the shapes, but we'll cut one more set of shapes for good measure. We'll cut one more lemon slice. 
Okay, and then we have a little cup if we want to use that. We can ink it up, use that for our sentiments. Sometimes I just get adhesive on these. And I just use my little eraser to get off the adhesives. But that doesn't look like adhesives, that looks like something else. It's okay, it's all good. That's what inking up is, that's when we do the inking up. Okay, we have this little one we need, lemon slice. Okay, so I'm just doing this again. With the extra spots, we'll put a circle down there. See, see what I'm doing? Just using up my scraps. Put that one up there. And I just wanna, the only one I need to tape is this lemon slice. So it doesn't get wonky, and it already got wonky because maybe my tape is not, I think my tape has seen better days. Used to be sticky. I have like a washi tape fetish. I have like so much washi tape and I'm still using ones that barely stick. Oops, I see the dies are almost touching each other. When that happens, you need to get in there and make sure that you don't keep going through the machine until they're separated, see? Because if you, if you push those through and they start overlapping, dies, if they start like touching each other, they, they bend. Okay, so I think we have enough die cuts for the whole rest of the project that we're doing. I'm gonna move that machine out of the way now and I can get into the, we can do some more inking and stuff. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. We need the silicone mat for stamping. We don't, we probably don't need that one. Let's see. We need garden green. Okay. We need, we already did our crisp curry. We need garden green for our sentiments. And then I think we'll do a little bit of sweet sorbet for the flowers. All right, so now we have another lemon slice. So we have that. Wipe off this one. Because I'm going to need this block again, so that's why I'm wiping off my lemon. I would, I would normally just wash it, in the, wash it in the sink later, but I need my little... There's, I, I put a little flower on it earlier, and I thought that looked cute. Hmm. There it is, there it is, there's the flower. That's the little flower. Okay, so it's, it's stained red. Okay, we'll put this little cup here. We have this little, we have all these little shapes. And we have this little lemon slice and I have to finish die cutting this later. All right, so there we go. We have everything we need. Let's do some stamping. I think I'll just put this, I'll just put this inside here, inside my tray, so we can see everything. Putting little silicone mat down. So what we want now is the word enjoy. We're gonna do it on top, on those. Then we're gonna put the thank you on this one. And we'll have, we may, we may as well do it on all the coffee cups, on the teacups as well. Not coffee cups, teacups. Okay, our lemon slices. We're gonna put, we're gonna see what fits on that one. So do all your stamping at once and of course make your extra stamps for your bucket of crafty goodness. Sweet sorbet for the flower. Garden green for the sentiments. It's one of the coordinating colors. Oh, that's really a juicy stamp set. St uh, ink pattern. Okay, we have this stamping block. I was doing something else. Okay, fine. Thank you. So there's the photopolymer stamp set. I'm just taking it out of its case. I'm putting it flat side up. I'm touching it down and then I'm just tapping into the ink and just stamping onto a sticky note. Okay. And then onto my object. Okay. So we'll do the thank yous. I'm not even using these cups. I'm just doing it for later just to have them. And should be another 
circle somewhere. Because hmm. I did cut out two circles. Is it behind that circle? Well, so much for being prepared. I thought I cut out two big circles. It's not there. Okay, so that's when we go into our bag and get, I just grab it from over here. I did one yesterday. So we'll do one of those. I always want to have two in case the flowers mess up or something. Then I have an extra. And we can do two diaper folds as well. All right, good. So now I'm going to do garden green for the enjoy. I was thinking of doing sweet, but then I'm like, you know what? It's not really sweet, is it? It's a sour, the lemons, right? They're not really sweet. But I originally was going to put the word sweet there, but then instead I decided to put enjoy. Like enjoy your little pampering of yourself, you know. You can do this with other spa gifts too. Give this with other spa gifts. So enjoy. Okay, so this, 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 and this is all from the teacup dies, but the little stitch ones are from the, the stylish shapes dies. Use whichever dies you have or use your scan and cut to just make yourself a bunch of circular shapes and stamp onto them. Okay, that one has a little eraser on it. It's like if you use like really dirty plates, like you get little marks sometimes on your stamps. All right, good. Now we're, now we're ready for the little flowers. That is a very juicy ink pad with like ink coming out the side. And now we're going to just put a little bit of sweet sorbet flowers on the edge of the thank you. All right, let's find the, so we said we're making these and the diaper fold. So let me grab the diaper fold and kind of look at that example. Okay, stamping a flower down here. See how I'm just kind of stamping it off a bit? You can see the stitching a little, but that's okay. Okay, that works. Might work with the cup, with the cup too. We can make the cup look like it's from the 70s here, the flower power. Okay, so we'll do it to the cup as well. Then we'll have it done, right? These will be ready to go for other projects. While you're stamping, always stamp extras. I think they'll look cute on the diaper folds. I might, I might make them for the diaper folds and just use them today. Okay, there's that. Got rid of sweet sorbet. Now, parakeet party is my lightest color. And so I tend to use that for my, for when I'm inking up the edges or something. And there was already a lot of yellow in the, in this one with the crushed curry. So I just decided to, when I inked up this here, I don't know if you can tell, but I inked up the top of the enjoy tag. And when I did that, I used parakeet party. So to ink up, you're just going to open your parakeet party and you're going to tap your little block into it. Get some ink on your block. Oh, that's a lot of ink. This one's really juicy too. So we're going to tap the tap some ink on there. I'm going to tap onto my sticky note, onto your mat, and you just sort of, oh, I didn't really need to ink the edges of those. Oops, I meant to ink the edges of the enjoy. We'll finish that one in a minute. I was doing something like that. So... I just inked the top of it, and I thought it looked cute that way. Let's bring it up there for a better view. Tap, tap, tap. Now, you want to do this after your ink dries. Like You want to do it right after you stamp your centimeter. You'd end up with a big blob of, of uh, garden green smearing all over. But since I've already stamped my sentiment, it's okay. I think I can do these coffee cups or tea cups. I want them to be coffee cups. Ah, that looks good. Okay, let me get a sip of my drink. 
I can color the whole outside of this cup. I'd be happy with that. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, that looks much better on the cup than it would than on the tag. Yeah, transforms the cup. And when you have a lot of ink, you know, just use it up. I'll be like looking looking for things to ink up after this. Where? What can I ink up? Okay, I think it's time to bring this tripod down so I can actually, I can't even see the comments when I'm up so high. But I, that's, I have it up real high for the die cutting. But then it's like beyond my eyes. I can't see what anybody writes unless I get on my tippy toes. So now you're seeing what I'm doing. I'm just sort of inking around the edges because I think that would look cool. And because I have a lot of ink on, a lot of parakeet party <laughs> ink on my brush already and on my stamping block. So it's like, oh, let's use it up. If you don't tap off, when you first tap into the ink, if you don't tap off the blob, you end up with like a really dark blob on your, on your sentiment, which is fine, but then you end up having to use like bling and flowers and things to, to sort of make it disappear. I'm just kind of doing half of that, half the little circle. All right. Okay, so I'm all inked up, but I'll save that for later. Let's close this so we don't make a big mess. And before we write, let's write down some measurements before we cut the next piece. Or not really, maybe you even have scraps for the next piece. So for the next, so I'm going to do a little belly band. That I don't usually measure. I just sort of roll it around with my scraps. But at least let me write down what we've done so far in terms of the nail file box. So we had six inches times three and one half inches of DSP. And then any DSP, right? And then you're gonna score at one, one and one quarter, two and one quarter, and two and one half. Okay, and those are inches. And then that's how we got the box. Now I take a belly band and we're going to do some ribbon. We're going to wrap it around. So my, my belly bands are usually not like cut separately because I usually have Hershey Nugget wrappers, which are also one inch. So I just want to see what scraps I already have. Like you could cut it separately, but I might already have like pieces that I was going to use for Hershey Nugget wrappers that I could grab. So you basically just want one inch pieces and about, about you know, three inches or so. Wrap them around. So something like... You're gonna, I don't even use like my trimmer. I just wrap it around like this. I mean, not, not my trimmer, I mean my score. I don't really score it, I just wrap it around like that and, and glue it because I don't really care if I score the sides of this. I just kind of wrap it around. And the same with ribbon, you can put ribbon around the sides. Then I just put some adhesive on it and I'm done. So I just, that's the way to use up your scraps and I think sweet sorbet is good because it contrasts. And that's the, so that's the back where the little, the little seam is in the back, right? If you want it to be in the back. And then that's the front because your little notch. And then this was a six inch piece. So sort of wrap it around. And if you want it to go all the way to the edge, right? That's fine too. Like, like the other part of the box did, then you can just cut it then. Or can use a trimmer, but I tend not to when I'm just using, making the belly bands. Okay. So I will say one inch belly band, one inch high, but it doesn't really matter your width, it just depends on how much you want to wrap it around. Okay. I'm going to wrap that around. So before I 
I was training the paper a little bit by I bent the paper around and then I added the adhesive and then I bent it around again. That way it already had sort of a natural place where it folded on the edges. Alrighty. There's a little bit sticking out, I would say. A little sliver sticking out. All right, great. Now we're going to do some ribbon, some embellishing. All right. So the one thing that's strange about the sweet sorbet ribbon is that it doesn't really match the cardstock. It's like a different hue of it. It's not really the actual color. So this is actually Sweet Sorbet ribbon, and so is this is Sweet Sorbet cardstock. So it's really just like a light hue of Sweet Sorbet, in case you're wondering. Because you're like, I think, and some of the demonstrators have commented that this looks more like Blushing Bride. I just took a little piece of Parakeet Party twine and this ribbon, and I tied them and put them together, a piece of twine and ribbon. That's both, if you did get the kit, which some of you are still waiting on your kits, you'll get them so hopefully next week or something. But um, when, when you get your kit, you're going to see that you have twine and ribbon in your kit. I'm just going to make a knot and then make a little bow. I'm doing this first and then adding the sentiment and the lemon slice after. But anyway, you have both, you have the both the twine and the ribbon. If not, if you don't have the twine and the ribbon, just you can get it from my store. Everything I'm showing you is available now. I'm not showing products that aren't available yet. These, these are available since May. This is our annual catalog. Okay, the next one's going to have to have a different kind of ribbon. We'll finish decorating that one after the video because I didn't grab a whole lot of ribbon for this demo. So I will have to get a different color ribbon. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to take my dimensionals. I'm going to pop up the Enjoy. We'll pop it up. We'll just put it above because that's where the ribbon, the ribbon fell below. It really doesn't matter which way. But put the, the little tag above. Okay. And then we'll put the little lemon slice there. Something like, see if this one, will, oh, yeah, this one's a little less wonky. Oh yeah, put that one there. I'm also, I think I'll just put that on a dimensional as well. You don't have to, you could glue it right down. I don't really want to hide it that much. I think I'm going to put that, I think I'm going to make it show. The other one I hid behind the tag, I think I like it better when it pops up above. All right, so we are done the first part of this tutorial. I can say hello, and then we can move on to the diaper folds. But we have everything we need for diaper folds, and I'm already ready for this. See, see what I what I did for the other one is I put this one down, and then I popped up. This one doesn't have the ribbon yet, but then I popped this one up with the dimensional. So of course I can add the ribbon later, but I have to go find some other in color ribbon. I've been using the heck out of it. And of course, add your bling, make your little spa gifts, little. One of my team members, Rhonda Crook, and she had these really cool little spa balls. They were like bath balls in a bag. I'm not sure where she got them, but they were like little baby bath balls because she had a whole bag of them. And I think that would look cute with a spa gift like this, like your nail file, your bath balls, you know, all those little fun smelling candles. Um, any kind of different things. All right, so I'm going to say hi, and then we're going to do diaper folds, which are very easy, and there's no cutting needed because the paper's already six by six. Yippee, yippee. Okay, who was here first? Darlene. Hello, Darlene. And then Deborah came in from New South Wales again, and hello, Linda. And Tide. So what she's talking about is I asked late, earlier I showed you my cup. I said, hey, this is my new Stampin' Up! mug. If you got here late, you didn't get to see it. But Gloria is saying her favorite is also Tahitian Tide. This is my new coffee mug. It keeps my coffee warm. Oops, I hope I don't get water on my thing again because I just washed it. it. does keep the coffee warm all day. Hello, Yvonne. 
and hello Katie and Leslie and Leslie I saw you got the waves so thank you for that getting the waves hello Gloria hello Anne from Pennsylvania right the scraps I like the cards you showed me too Linda I hope you're gonna make them for a bingo hello Diana The vet, don't, you're not really late. It's just a impromptu live. I never really say I'm going live, so, but you're never late. And hello, Myrna. What we're doing next, just so you know, we've already have everything we need. We're just going to do the diaper folds. I'm going to keep this tray here because I want to show you that you don't need the Simply Scored or the paper trimmer. You just need something with a corner. And I like to use my tray when I'm making diaper folds. You need a spatula and you need a six inch piece of paper. You actually need any square piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a six inch piece of paper. But to make these folds, you just need a square piece of paper. So now I told you I would show you what the rest of the, the tea boutique paper looks like. The other pieces, because then we can decide, you know, which ones will look cute for diaper folds. So we, you, saw this, you saw this one, the lemons. That's the other side. I told you that the paper includes all the ink colors and then some. So in, in addition to our five in colors, our Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, in, in, in addition to all the five in colors, you also have in this paper Fresh Freesia, which was one of last year's in colors. I think this one will make a cute little diaper fold, so we'll keep one of those out. You have Fresh Freesia, you also have Crushed Curry, which is what we had the lemons from. You have Garden Green and petal pink. So there's so many colors in this paper. It's unbelievable. There's so many possibilities. So even if you're like me and you're like, oh, I'm all flowered out. I'm not, I'd like this kind of flowers. I mean, this to me, this kind of flowers is a bit much. So I use it for scraps to do things. I like this side better, but this flowers are perfect for little, my little projects, my little 3D projects. So we'll do one of those. This is a little too big for diaper folds, but it's good for, to cut out with the scan and cut this paper because you can get lots of little embellishments from it, cutting out the pattern paper. This one would be cute for a diaper fold with the little envelope because it's already an envelope. That would be cute. And see that that one is a lot of flowers. But when you break it up and you take and you make rows of it and you do pieces of it, it's fine. And then this side I like better. I like this side better personally, but that side is cool for like a stripe of it. I just think using it as the entire back of the card is a bit much. But I've seen it done and people can pull it off. Oops, there's another, this is another flower piece that would be nice. That one would be nice for a diaper foam. This one, no, because it's already oriented in one direction and it's kind of like going to be harder. So these little, these little pieces with all these teacups are great for backgrounds and stuff. So that's the Tea Boutique Designer Series paper. Available now, 48 sheets in a pack, six by six. And you're gonna take it, and you're gonna fold it. I'm looking for that little spatula I just had. And we're gonna use, oops, I didn't mean all four of those. I'll do a couple slow and a couple fast is what I'll do. I'm looking for the little brown spatula I just had. But if not, I can use a bone folder. It's all good. I don't know how I lose things so quickly. Every time, here we go. So you're gonna take a piece. This one, let's not use that piece yet because those two matter which way they're oriented. We'll use, we'll start with this piece because it doesn't matter which way you orient it. I want this, I want this to show on the outside, this piece, this piece of pretty paper. So I'm gonna take my paper and put the pattern facing side down. I'm doing this one slow and the next one slow. I'm just using the corner to help me get a triangle. So use the corner of your paper trimmer, Simply Scored, or any little tray you have. Okay, so you want to get the triangle. Now you're gonna point the triangle up. Okay, point the triangle up. Again, use any size, any size square paper to do this with. You're gonna fold left, you're gonna fold right, like you're putting a little diaper on a baby with the little baby's leg sticking out, right? And then you're gonna fold this down. Now what I like to do, personally, is I like to wiggle this piece to keep this, to keep this piece straight. I like to wiggle it all to get it all in there. 
before I pinch it. So I sort of wiggle it, make sure like this piece is hiding under there, everything's straight. And then I sort of pinch the sides like that. And so I hope you're making these along with me because they're very easy to make and everyone's going to love them. And then you could do a double one where you put them behind each other and you can put two tea bags, right? Put a tea bag in each side. It'll double one. Okay. Okay, we'll do some more. And let's do, I'll do this one slow as well and then we'll do the other two faster because we're making the triangle. Using the spatula, pointing the triangle up, left to right, right to left. I guess it really wouldn't matter which way you went in that direction. And down. Wiggle, wiggle. You can't see much of the pattern on the front of this one. But you can on the back. And see, that's when the pattern would matter. So that's for this one, we'll just fold it and then we'll figure out which way the pattern will show on the back the right way. So go like that. I'll do these last two faster. Okay, so say I want that, yeah, I want that side to be, oops. It's a little wonky. I want that side to be faced up on the back. When it's a little wonky, you can fix it by pushing it up in the corner and using your spatula to fix it. All right, so that would be the back because it's the envelopes are facing up the right way. And I'll make that the front because it really doesn't matter because you're not going to see the envelopes hardly. There you go. So left, right, because they're going to be mostly covered, right? So the back matters. You're going to leave a couple little envelopes sticking out. And maybe I'll use the teacups on this one because the teacup will kind of cover the, the sideways envelope. And these hold perfectly a Ghirardelli chocolate square. So not just a tea bag. I'm just doing tea bags right now because it's a tea boutique class. And this helps us make our tea party in a box. Sort of at the end we put everything in a box. That's your tea party in a box. We're not necessarily doing a separate tea party in a box. It's just that I saw one demonstrated at one of my events I went to online. She made a tea party in a box. She put all these little things. I gave you a bunch of stuff to make your own tea party in a box. So by the time we're done this, this workshop series, you'll have all these 3D projects and you can just make your own little tea party care package for someone. Or hopefully you're making more than one of each. A, a project can make a couple tea parties in a box. But she actually took the little paper pumpkin boxes I think it was a regular, the mini ones, and she like strung together little tiny, tiny cups like this and sort of made a little party banner out of the cups. I thought it was so cute. Or you know what she could have used? She might have die cut these cups. I didn't really, I'm not sure if she, she cut out these cups or had bigger cups, but she had like a little banner made of cups. So that side's going to be up. That'll be the back. And then this one will be the front. And so this is about the pace I go. I'm, I'm watching TV. I might grab a whole pack and make a whole pack of these. If they get too bulky to ship, you can just send someone a blank pouch. You don't have to, they can put their own little tea bag in it if you just want to send somebody a pouch, like a crafting idea, like, but if you, and you put a little note in it inside, like put a note inside, oh look, now I find my circle. But you put the note in it inside and then, then you can tell them, hey, they, if you want, hey, if you want to pass this along, pass this treat along, you're going to, put little tea or Ghirardelli in it because a lot of times I'm just putting a little piece a little rolling adhesive in it a lot of times people pass along what I give them and I know that because they tell me oh I ate the chocolate and then I refilled it I'm just using adhesive and getting these to shut and then they pass it on and that's that's great because the whole reason I craft is like to bless others like I don't keep my crafts I give like 99% of my crafts away <laughs> So I keep some, some I just can't give away. Sometimes I, but most I give away. And so I want to, and then if they give it away, then hey, more power to them. Regift it, that's fine with me. As long as they got to enjoy it first. And it's better that they eat or have a cup of tea or eat the chocolate and then 
pass it along. Okay, so yeah, that's how you do the little flaps. You're just adhering the flaps is extra. And I'm going to grab my tea. And I just sort of I just sort of go through my tea bags and see like what'll match. So let's see. So we have like, okay, there's a little bit of crushed curry there. A little bit of you know, little bit of yellows in that one. So maybe this one will be cute in that one. Because it'll sort of match. And a little bit of greens. Um, this one has a lot of let's see. This one has a lot more green going on. See that? Green cups, I think that would be cute in there. Okay, let's see. This one, orange, a little bit of orange. Oh, here. This crushed curry has a little bit of orange tinge to it. We'll put that one in there. I think I'll need to do another yellow one for that one. No, no, not the right kind of yellow. We'll do this one. So I just have a bunch of teas. I get a bunch of boxes of teas. So the two brands that I recommend you know, for, for, again, get these from your local grocery store. You don't need to go online. Just go to your local grocery store and, like, get your tea. Big Low, Bigelow, Bigelow it's called, and Tezo or Tazo, they have, like, individually wrapped bags. Now, sometimes I get some and they're not individually wrapped. And I forget what brands, but I'm like, oh, man, I did it again. So you want the ones that are individually wrapped. Because otherwise you can't really, like, you can't put an individual tea bag in there if it's not individually wrapped. Oh, that's going to be cute. So let's see now. We're just going to put these. We're going to use all four of these little sentiments. I'm glad I made four now. I wasn't planning on making four of these diaper folds, but then as I was going through the paper with you, I'm like, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. I want to do one with that. So now I'm just going to kind of see where to put them. So like, we'll, we'll see which one looks better. So this, like this one already has a lot of teacups going on, right? So I'm going to not put another teacup on there because there's already so many teacups. So that's an easy choice. So no teacups. There's already teacups. So that's an easy choice. We'll go like that. We'll put it's dimensional. Plop. I'm just trying to cover up that little pointy part, right? Let's put the little center in there. Now this one, okay, lots of flowers. Now this one I'm trying to cover up the envelope. So I think I might need a teacup on this one because the, the circle doesn't really cover. Oh, it does. The circle covers up the envelope. So I don't need a teacup there. I'm going to do a teacup here because I've already done the circle over here. So I'm going to do a teacup on that one just to make it different. And you see how quick those are to make. So we just made all those projects and we could have made many more projects in the hour I've been with you. But we, we made a couple of the nail file boxes. We could have made more. We made a couple of these. I mean, we could have made more, meaning once you get fast, you're going to be able to make them a lot faster. And when you're not teaching people and you're just watching TV, make a lot more. So now I think this one needs to be inked up. So what I'm going to do is ink it up to ink it up on the side. So so what you what do you do is it, you go like that. Cuz I think this one needs to be inked up, but I don't want to take it off of its you know, off of its um container. Oh yeah. So I'm going to ink that one up to match the others. Sometimes I do a better job in my live one than I did on my sample. In that case, I like them inked up like that. Let's put a little sticky note under there and then just ink it up while it's on there. Or I could pull it off. So there you have it. Those are all the little treats. And then we have extra little enjoys for extra things. So there's no, there's no directions for this one. I don't have directions. It's six inch paper. But again, the directions for the nail file box. We're right there. And then I just want to show you what we did in part one and just show you this one again. So this one was the hello for my sample. This was my first sample before I made another sample with the lemons. I got the hello from here. That's before I started stamping with the tea boutique. Because I bought the paper first and then I got the tea boutique suite later. So that's what that is, just so you know. And then you can put your little, that's what we made today with the little lemons and the enjoy and the sweet sorbet ribbon and everything. And then these were just six inch pieces of T Boutique Designer Series paper. So that's how we did everything. Now part one of this series, we created these. These I'm calling Designer Series Paper Cards. And so what you could do, if you check out my channel and you want to learn how to make these with other kinds of products, I just showed how to make these with Splendid Day as well. We made it live, spontaneous crafting. 
when I went over the new Splendid Day Suite that's coming out in June. So basically you have your, you have your card base. This is Starry Sky. You have your three pieces of designer series paper. See, I said these are busy, but not when you break them up into different patterns. They're not as busy. Put just a few little teapots and teacups. Then you take the planer piece, put it in the middle, die cut out a teacup, little heart, and it's time for tea. And then the Glinda, who's on this channel, she actually Im improved upon my card by even adding, she did the same thing, and then she added a couple extra elements. She added, she did one with like three teapot or teacups, and then she added this little lemon slices, and then she added, she did the border on this. So there is a border on that. I just didn't use it yet. I haven't used it yet. It's still on the side. But see, there's a little border you can put on your little tea bag. I just, this is more lining up for me. You can make a black border or any color border. And then your messages will go in there. So feel free to use any of the messages from here or anywhere for your, for your little projects. So these are designer series paper cards, plain inside, vertical fold, A2 cards, and that's what we made in part one. So go back and watch that for the full instructions. Then watch Splendid Day. When I did my unboxing of the new catalog and it's called Splendid Day Suite, I showed how to make these with an entirely different look. Same dimensions again. I will have more projects to show you uh, this summer as we continue this workshop series. I appreciate you all watching. Thank you, Nola. And Anne said she loves the Tazo Tezo tea. I'm not even sure how to say it because I don't really drink tea, but I love the packages of it too. It's really cute. I do drink tea once in a while, like green tea, but I have to kind of force it down. It's not my thing. Okay, she's so saying, okay, Anna's saying she did her fold for her grandson for his first Christmas. He'll be, oh, you've been doing them that long? He'll be 13. She did a diaper fold. 13 years ago. I love it. Yeah, I learned how to do this many years ago, too, and i just been using it ever since. Hello, Jody from Florida. Thank you for you guys for helping get rid of the spammers that came on after, after that. Yeah, same here, Kathy. The lemon sheets are my favorite. Absolutely. All right, have a great day. That's all for now. This is The Paper Chef. We'll see you again real soon.